and God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. So we we know that the Lord compares uh, the days of Noah, the days of Lot, and the things that happened with the flood, and the things that happened uh, with the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, to the days of the Son of God, right? So when uh, we see him coming off the ark here, so after that 40 days and the rain had stopped, we also know that so that, that 40 days was only a month and 10 days, and they were actually on the ark a year and 10 days. So, so when that flood ended, right, they still had a year left on the ark. Right. And, and, and God, so we know, it says here, and God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuage. And that word assuage means they subsided. When he used that wind after the rain had stopped to get the waters to start to go down. Right. And it was so much water that it took a whole year before they came off that ark. But I want, this is what we're gonna focus on today, is that God used that right there. You know, uh, that God uses natural means, at least to our eyes, it's natural means to accomplish his will and his purpose in this world, okay? Now, most, most believers in the Protestant movement today, I'm going to show you what they believe. Here is Jesus when he's coming back. And I saw heaven open and behold, guess what? A white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as, an, as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And so who's the rider of the horse here? And his name is called who? The word of God. So we know who's riding this horse. This is Christ, okay? Yeah. And so when they get over here to this right here, when the when the seals are open, which this happens in Revelation 19, this happens way before it. So they see here, they say, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold, guess what? A white horse. A white horse. And they have somebody, he that sat on him, right? So they say, what they try to tell you is, but see, this is Christ. So this must be who? Antichrist. Right. Right. And, and I'll give you this right here. It says, for nearly 19 centuries, Christians had thought that the first horseman, in other words, this guy right here on the white horse, was a positive figure representing either Christ or the gospel but a completely different interpretation of this character emerged in 1866 when C.F. Wimple defended the first hypothesis that the first horseman was the Antichrist, and more precisely, he thought it was, guess who? Napoleon Bonaparte. The Antichrist interpretation later found champions in the United States. When he says champions, he means people who believed it such as R.F. Franklin in 1898 and W.C. Stevens in 1928, and was then uh, very successful in evangelical circles until today. For example, uh, Pastor Billy Graham, uh, for whom the white horseman represented the Antichrist or false prophets in general. So this teaching that the, the, the white horse here is the Antichrist really never came around until mid 1800s okay um and the first rule of prophecy is there is no prophecy of the scripture of what 
Bible interpretation. Bible interpretation. Yeah, in other words, if God wants to tell us who the white horse is, if God wants to tell us, I'm sorry, well, he does tell us here, doesn't he? Yes. He tells us that the, who's riding the white horse. He's very specific about it. But down here, he says there's a white horse and there's somebody that's what? Sitting on him. But he doesn't tell you who it is. And so we know that line upon line, we know that you compare spiritual things with spiritual things. You you take the scripture and you compare it to other scripture, right? So, so what we don't want to do is we don't want to just say, oh, okay, yeah, I can see that. No, we don't want to just say this is the Antichrist. We want to study the scripture, and that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you who the horse is. I'm going to show you who the right, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to show you who the, uh, the horse is right here. And I'm going to show you who the rider is, okay? Yes. No. All right. So first thing I'm going to show you is that the seven seals are divided into four and three. Now, what I mean by that is the first four seals all contain horsemen and horses, right? Mm -hmm. The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh seal don't. There's a division between four and what? Three. And, and that's kind of a prevalent thing because we even see that with, with, with the trumpet, right? Say the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars. So as a third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the what? The three that have yet to sound. So the first four trumpets are divided from the last three trumpets. The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh trumpet are called the three woes. And we've already learned that. But what I'm saying is, is that just as these seven trumpets are divided into four and three, the seven seals are divided into what? Four and three. See, and you see here. So you're going to see something here. You're going to see one of the seals is open, and you're going to see two things. You're going to see a horse, and you're going to see what? A rider. He that sat on him, right? The second seal is open. You're going to see what? Another horse that was red, and power was given to who? To him that what? Sat on the horse, right? So you got the horse and you got the rider. Same with the third seal. Third seal's open. You got the horse and you got he that what? Sat on, Sat on him. And then finally, you got the fourth seal, right? And uh, here's the horse and his name that sat on him. So you see, so, so instead of us saying, oh, this is the Antichrist, and then not having an answer for the other horses or trying to say the other horses are the Antichrist also, or maybe they're the false prophet or something like that. That, that would be a private interpretation. We're guessing, aren't we? When we have the scripture to show <laughs> us. So here's the question. The first thing we want to find out who are, who are the riders? Because we right here, every one of these horses have what? Riders. Right. So we want to know who are the horsemen or who are the riders on these horses. So where we're going to go is where the scripture leads us, and it leads us to Zechariah. Now watch this. So upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Sebat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edu, the prophet, saying, I saw by night, so Zechariah seen this vision, and behold, a man riding right, what? A red horse. And what are we trying right now? What we're trying to figure out is who is this what? Who is the rider? That's that's the first thing we want. It's line upon line. We'll worry about the horse in a minute. So so he says, I saw a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the murder trees. Who's who is he, guys? The rider. So the man that was the man that was riding upon the red horse is now what? Standing. He's standing among the myrtle trees. There's because there's no other person. He hasn't talked about nobody else. So in the context, it cannot be anybody other than the man that was what? Riding the red horse. Okay. So he 
this man that was riding upon the horse stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom and behind him, in other words, the man that was on the horse and now the man that stands the, among the myrtle trees and behind him, this man, there were red horses speckled in white. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? Now look what it says. And the angel that talked with me. So what did he just tell you? That the man that was riding upon the road horse, the man that was standing among, among the myrtle trees, the man that behind this man that were red horses, and he's talking to Zechariah. Now, guess what he just called that man? An angel. And I'm going to even give you another verse to prove to you absolutely that 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 man that was riding on that horse is an angel. Now watch this. And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show thee what these be. And the man that stood among the what? Little trees. So he, here he is. So the man that got off the horse, the man that's standing among the myrtle trees, answered and said, these are they whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro through the earth. And they answered the man that stood among the myrtle trees. Is that what it says? The angel. They answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the what? Myrtle trees. So who is riding upon the red horse? An angel. The angel of the Lord. He tells you twice. The angel and the angel. So when you go back up here. Is this? Okay, so. Let me ask you right now. I'll ask you this. So when you see this white horse and he that sat upon him, who do you think that is? The first one. Yeah. Any of them. Yeah. Must be an angel. <laughs> that, that's it's the angel of the Lord. Now, 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 just 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 to be nice, just to like for a moment, be play the devil's advocate. Is the red horse right here? Right, because down here, guess what he was on? A man riding a what? Red horse. A red horse. Red. So we absolutely know this one is a what? An angel of the Lord. Angel. But what we're going to find out is all of these are angels of the Lord. They're not the Antichrist. They're actually the the angels of the Lord. So what's and 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 also let me show you. <laughs> so we know. So we know who the riders are. Okay. We know, so we want to find out now who are the horses, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's, 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 let's look. And I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. And then the first chariot were what? Red horses. And the second chariot, black horses. The, the chariot, third chariot, white horses. The fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. And then I answered and said unto the angel that taught with me, what are these? Now that's what we're asking, right? Yes. What are these horses? They're different colors. What are they? And the angel answered and said to, to me, you know what it says. These are the four spirits of the what? Heavens. So, so that we don't have to have our own private interpretation. He just told you something. There are four, the four spirits of the heavens, which what? They go forth, and where are they standing at? They go forth from standing before the Lord, right? Yes. So that's, so that's what we've learned. So the riders are the angels. The four horses are the four what? Spirits of the heavens. This is not my interpretation. This is what? This is the Bible telling you these horses are the four spirits. Some of their attributes is they go forth and they're standing where? The they stand before the Lord. Now, let's go a little bit farther, guys. The black horses, and we already know, these are the four spirits of the heavens. The black horses, this is Zechariah 6, which are therein, guess what they do? They go forth. Where do they go forth? Well, here... It just tells you they go forth, right, into all the earth. But here they're specific. Look what he says. The black horses, which are there and go forth into where? The north country. And the white, they go forth 
after them, and the grizzled go forth into the where? The south country. And the and the bay, they go they went forth and sought to go that they might, now look what he says, walk to and fro throughout the what or through the earth. <clears throat> and now look what he says up here. These are the four spirits which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. So they go forth. And then he says, look, and he said, get you hence, talking to these horses, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walk to and fro throughout through the earth. Then cried he upon me and spake unto me, saying, behold, these, talking about these horses, talking about the what? The four spirits of the heavens that stand before the Lord. Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. So here's what we've learned, guys. The four horses, right? We know who the riders are. The riders are the angels. The four horses are the four spirits of the heavens, and they go forth. We, say, we see some going to the north. We see some going to the south. They're standing before the Lord, and they walk to and fro through the what? The whole earth. Well, when I say they walk to and fro through the whole earth, what we're going to find out is the whole earth is made up. Remember, he talks about the four corners of the earth. He talks about the four winds of the earth, right? Yes. And we know the earth consists of what? North, yes. south, east, yes. and west, okay? Now watch this. We already know who they are, the horses are the four spirits. So let's read this again. We, we, we read this a minute ago to determine who the rider was. Now look, we want to look at the horses. Upon the four and 20th day of the 11th month, which is the month Sabbat in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Adu, the prophet, saying, I saw by night and behold a man riding upon the red horse. So we now know that is one of the what? Four spirits of the heavens. And he stood among the miracle trees that were in the bottom and behind him were what? The four, part of the four spirits, right? Speckled and white. Then said I, O my Lord. So he's talking to the angel of the Lord and he's saying, what are these? And we know he's already told you up here what these are, right? He said, what are these? Here's where he tells him. These are the four spirits of the heavens. So he says, uh, what are these? And the angel that talked with me said unto me, I will show these what these be. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, these are they, right? The horses whom the Lord have sent, right? Because what do they do? What do these horses do? They go forth. Right? From standing where? Before the Lord. Before the Lord. And sometimes they go forth. They go forth in, in, onto all the earth, sometimes to the north, sometimes to the south, sometimes to the east, and sometimes to the west. So there's these are the four spirits standing before the Lord. And that's what he's going to tell you. These are they whom the Lord have sent, because they're standing before him, to walk to and fro where? Through the earth. Through the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro through the what? Earth. Through the earth. So what I'm going to show you is these four spirits, these four horses, are the four winds. Okay? Now understand, these are, these are what you're going to see when the first four seals are opened up, you're going to see four angels riding upon four horses, right? Four men are riding on four, four horsemen are on the horses. And the men, we already determined, the riders are the angels and the, the, uh, the horses are the four spirits of the heavens. Now, what I'm going to show you is these four, four, four spirits are the four winds. Now, watch this. And the angel answered and said unto me, these are, talking about the horses, the four spirits of the what? Heaven. Of the heaven, 
exactly what Daniel says. He says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of what? The heaven. The heaven, okay? So here he's going to call them the four spirits of the heavens. Here he's going to call them the four what? Winds. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to prove to you that it's the same thing, okay? I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to assume that these are the same. I'm going to prove to you they're the same. Now, we already know this, but I'm going to, I'm going to review for a second. Moses and Elijah, they're, they're dead. They're laying in the streets of Jerusalem, okay? And after three days and a half, guess what enters into them? The spirit of life enters into them and they, and they come to life, okay? We know that's the spirit. When you go to the Valley of Dry Bones, you have all these 144,000 men. Their bodies have come together, right? And here's what here's what what God says: He shall put my what in you, and you shall what. It's, it's the same thing He said about Moses and Elijah. They're laying dead in the streets of Jerusalem. These 144,000, they're laying dead in in the Valley of Dry Bones. And when the Spirit enters into them, guess what? They live, but but later down in Ezekiel, talking about the Valley of Dry Bones, look what he says. He doesn't call it the Spirit here. Look what he calls it. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto what? The wind. The wind. Prophesy, talking to Ezekiel, prophesy, son of man, and say to who? The wind. The wind. Thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O oh what? The breath. And they shall live. So what did he just tell you? He's saying that the wind is equal to the what? The breath of God. So the wind is equal to the breath. Now watch this. The four, we're going to show you that the four winds and the breath and the spirit they're all the same because we already know. Remember, um, let's see if I've got it down here. Okay. We know that when we look in, in Genesis chapter three, right? And, and here's Adam, there's no life in him. What did God do? He breathed into his nostrils, right? Right. What did he breathe into his nostrils? Life, breath, pause. So we know, guys, we know, uh, we know from Adam, that when God gave life to Adam, he breathed in the breath of life, right? Okay. We also know that the breath and the spirit are the same because he says in Job that what is in Job's nostrils, it's the spirit. And we see here the spirit, right, entering in. Here we see the breath entering in. So we know we've already learned this. This is something we've learned in the past that the breath and the spirit are the what? But what we just learned is he calls the wind, four winds, what? Breath. The breath. So these all four are what? So the because the four winds are giving are, are doing what to the 144,000 here? Giving Come life. from the four winds, oh breath, and they're giving life. So so what we just learned here is the we know the breath and the spirit are the same, but what we really learned is that the wind and the spirit are what? The breath of life. Are the breath of life. When God sends forth one of those four horses, one of those four winds, right? That that can give life. And that's what we're gonna see. Look right here. <coughs> because this is talking about the same event. Look, he says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the what? Winds. Holding the four winds and on the of the earth that the wind should not blow. Right? And then he goes on. He says, um, uh, these four these four angels are holding the winds that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel sending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither sea, nor the trees, till we fill the servants. So these winds are blowing, but then these angels have power over the what? To hold the winds. 
until he sealed these servants. And then when he sealed these servants, we see right here, what does he do? After the servants are sealed, he calls, right? He tells Ezekiel to do what? To, to talk, to prophesy yeah. to the wind. And then when the wind comes, that wind, which is breath, which is spirit, gives what? Life unto, right. unto the 144,000 after they're sealed. So we so we we can see that. So here's what we here's what we've learned, guys. And it's important that the four winds are equal to the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, the west wind, right? Yeah. And that is the same as the four spirits of the heavens or the what? Four horses. The four horses. The four horses are the four winds. Okay? So when you see that white horse. And you see that red horse and you see that 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 black horse and that pale horse those are not the antichrist right those are the four winds of heaven right and what do they do they go for from standing before the lord they walk to and fro through the what earth. the whole earth right yes now so before i move to before I, because we're doing line upon line, before I move to the next part, is there anybody that doesn't understand who these horses are and who the riders are? Because think about this. When a rider is riding a horse, who has control? Is the it the rider. horse just does what he wants to, or does the rider have control of the horse? The rider. Okay, well, you, you know, unless it's a wild horse. But <laughs> but, but for, for the most part, when you see someone riding a horse, it is the, the, the rider that is controlling the horseman, right? right? So the angel controls the spirit, right? And it's the same thing here. Here's the four horses, because we know the four horses are the four winds, right? Right. It, do the winds have power to do what they want to, or do the angels control them? Angels control them. Yeah, he says that the what? The four angels, right, standing on the four corners of the earth, and they're holding yes. back the horses. Yes. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. All right. Now, Christ has seven spirits. And, I, and let, let me show you this. So in Revelation, it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion. So who's the lion? The lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus. So okay. here's Jesus. Here's Jesus Christ. He's the root of David, having prevailed, he had prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, so John is seeing something, he stood a lamb. Here's this is Christ again, right? So so John sees Jesus in the midst of the throne, as it had been, as it had been slain. Now, when he sees Jesus, he's going to see something. This lamb is going to have seven horns and seven what? Eyes. Eyes. Now, now listen, guys. He sees Jesus. He doesn't. This is a symbolism here, okay? Right. And he's going to give you the symbolism because he's trying to show you truth. So, so, we, so, so Jesus don't have seven eyes, okay? When Jesus walked on the earth, he didn't have seven eyes. He's trying to show you a truth here. Look, watch. Having seven horns and seven eyes. And he's going to tell you who the seven horns and the seven eyes are. Because no prophecy of the scripture is what? Of a private interpretation. So when he sees Jesus, he sees seven horns, seven eyes, and he tells you what they are. Which are the seven spirits of what? God. So the seven horns, the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God. And they're sent forth into all the what? Earth. Earth. Does that sound familiar? Yes. They're before the throne, right? They're in the midst of the throne. And what do they do? They, the they go forth. They stand before the Lord. They walk to and fro. The difference is the winds are called the four spirits. And here we see how many? Seven. But didn't we already show you something? The trumpets are divided into what? Four and three. Mm -hmm. The seals are divided into what? Four and, four and three. And what I'm going to show you is these seven spirits, four of them are the four winds. They're part of the seven here, okay? Right. 
So watch this. He says, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunders and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning where? Before the throne. Before the throne. Where do these wind? Where do these winds or these spirits or these horses? Where are they at? Where are they at? They stand before who? Before they the stand, Lord. They stand before the Lord. They're before the throne, right? Yes. And he says these seven lambs are guess what? Seven the seven spirits. spirits. So we see Jesus, and and before this throne, we see seven horns. We see seven eyes. And we see seven what? Lamps, which are all, guess what? A picture of what? Seven the, the seven spirits. So Christ has seven spirits, which can be represented by horns, which can be represented by eyes, or which can be represented by what? Lamps. Yeah. So the seven horns are equal to the seven eyes, are equal to the seven lamps, are equal to the seven spirits. And what does it say about them? That they are what? Before the, throne. Before the throne. And guess what? It pulled from all the earth. Now watch this. They're before the throne, right? And they're sent forth into what? All the, earth. the whole earth. It's the same ones. These four spirits are a part of the seven spirits of Christ which are before the throne, and they're sent forth into all the earth, right? Right. So watch this. And the angel that taught with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and said unto me, Okay, Zechariah, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, and this candlestick, guess what it has? Lamps. Seven lamps. But what did we find out about the one? What the seven lamps are the what? Seven spirits. So what he's doing, he's giving you a different picture. In the book of Revelation, he sees a lamb having the seven spirits, right? right. But here you see a candlestick. So how do we're going to have to show you first thing we want to show you is that this candlestick right is christ so watch this well i tell you what let's put, let me show you here's the seven lamps are the seven spirits and and look guess what's standing by the side of this candlestick two what all the trees and then he goes on he so i answered and spake unto the angel and taught me Talking about the olive trees, he says, what are these? We've proven this a long time ago, guys. Who are the two olive trees? The two witnesses. The two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, right? Mm -hmm. and because it says <laughs> because it says down here, right, these two olive trees, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. So when the, in the Mount of Transfiguration, who was standing by the Lord of the whole earth? Yes. Moses and Elijah, right? Yes. But this proves something here. These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Well, he, he tells you here, there, these two olive trees are standing by the Lord. Up here, he says, these two are standing by what? A candlestick. A candlestick showing you that the candlestick is a picture of who? The so the golden candlestick is a picture of Christ. And this Christ, the golden candlestick, guess what? has seven spirits or seven lamps. Matter of fact, look what he does here. He says that later down, because we're talking in Zechariah 4, he's going to come down here and he's going to say, who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with who? Those seven. The only seven that we have up here are the what? The seven lamps. And he's going to let you know that the seven lambs are the seven spirits. We don't have to assume it because look what he says. He says, with those seven, you're going to see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven lamps of fire, that, uh, so those seven lamps on the golden candlestick. And he tells you who those seven are. They are, guess what? 
of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. Now remember what he said up here before the throne. Not just that the seven lamps are the seven spirits, but he also said that, guess what? The seven what? Eyes. Eyes are the seven spirits. And he calls those lamps in Zechariah, he tells you who they are. Those seven lamps, they are the what? Eyes of the Lord. Which, which what? Run to and fro through the whole earth. They stand before the Lord. They run to and fro through the whole earth. So, so the seven, the seven lamps up here are the seven eyes, and we already know who they are, right? We've already proven it, right? The seven eyes, the seven lamps are the what? Seven spirits. Which stand before the throne and are sent forth into what? All the earth. All the earth. Can, can, do y'all, can y'all see that, guys? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So I don't want to confuse it. Understand the seven spirits have three different, inter they're all the same, set. they're all the seven spirits. But he describes them three different ways. He describes them, and we'll talk about this one next week. He describes them as seven eyes and as seven lamps, right? Those are the seven spirits. Now watch this. Because he saw seven, what did he see when he saw the lamb? How many eyes did that lamb have? Seven. He had seven eyes. Now watch this. His eyes, which are seven, right? The seven spirits of God. <clears throat> or as a what? Flame of fire. Why, why would that be? Because these seven eyes are also compared as what? Lamps, lamps of fire. So when he looks at the seven eyes that are on the lamb, he's also looking at, he's looking at the seven spirits and that we know that the seven spirits are as a lamp of fire, right? So of course, when he looks at the lamb with the seven eyes, they're going to appear as what? A flame of fire. He said his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a what? Flame of fire. Because his seven eyes and the seven lamps of fire are the seven spirits. Right. So the seven, the lamb has what? Seven eyes or seven lamps of what? Fire. Fire, which are the seven spirits which go forth, that they stand before the Lord, they go forth into all the earth, running to and fro, sometimes to the north, sometimes to the south, sometimes to the east, sometimes to the west. Okay? So, you, am, I, I didn't make that confusing, right, guys? No. Okay, y'all understand that. So, here, think about it. There, the Lamb, G, Christ, Jesus Christ, has seven spirits. Four of those seven are the winds, and they go forth into all the earth, right? right? Those are the horses. Now watch this. The eyes of the Lord, the spirits of the Lord, the horses, right, do what? Run to and fro throughout the earth. The, the, the eyes of the Lord are where? Every place. They're everywhere. Can you go anywhere in this world where the Lord is not? He yes. sees everything. Yes. He sends forth the wind, the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, the west wind. He, when I say he sends the four winds, he sends those four horses out. So we, so here we see a conclusion. We see the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, stand before Christ, the golden candlestick, having seven lamps or eyes, right? Which are the seven spirits. And these eyes or these spirits do run into and fro throughout the whole earth. Now, remember, this is just symbolism, guys. This right here, the, the candlestick on the left, is a picture of Christ. It's the picture that Zachariah saw, right? I saw a golden candlestick, and he saw an olive tree on the right side, and he saw an olive tree on the left side, which is Moses and Elijah. And we know that this is a picture of Jesus, right? Yeah. And at the top of that candlestick, it's one candlestick, but guess what? Whoops. Hold on. It's one candlestick, but these seven lamps up here represent the what? The spirits. The seven spirits of God. So imagine this. Let me show you this. 
Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord, now who stands before the Lord? The seven spirits, the horses, the winds, right? Yes. And what do they do? They go forth, right, into the whole earth. And you know what the Lord did when, when he, when, when Jonah fled from him, the Lord yeah. sent out a what? Great wind he sent. sent it out before him. He did that to accomplish his will. That's what he does. He uses. See, that's one of the reasons that the world, even believers, the day is going to come upon them unaware is because they don't understand that God isn't. Can can God just do something? He can speak the word and the, the, the walls of Jericho will fall. You know that? Yes. But he doesn't always do it that way, does he? He could have spoke the word and the Red Sea would have parted. But I'm going to show you in a minute. That's not how he did it. Now watch this. So imagine this golden candlestick. This is the picture of Jesus, right? right. And he's got seven spirits, right? So here's Jesus. Here's the golden candlestick. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, uh, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep. So Jesus is down here sleeping, right? On a pillow. And they, the, 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 the disciples, they come and they wake him and they say unto him, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? So here's the golden candlestick, which has the seven lamps, the seven spirits. And he arises and he rebukes the what? And he said unto the sea, peace be still. And guess what? The wind ceased. Yeah. So picture, here's Jesus. He speaks. See those, see those, uh, things that lead up to the lamps, that's where the oil, the spirit flows. So when God speaks, imagine four of these being the four winds. So when God speaks to one of these winds, guess what it does? It, just as the son is obedient to the father, the spirit is obedient to the son. So if Jesus speaks, Christ speaks with one of his spirits to the north wind or to the south wind or to the east wind or to the west wind, guess what it does? It obeys him. So when he says, guess what? So when he says, um, be still, peace, be still, guess what? It, it does what he says, right? Yes. When Jesus speaks and says, Lazarus, come forth, guess what? Lazarus yes. comes forth. That's, that's the spirit. That's the one of the seven spirits of Christ. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Yeah, why are we so fearful, guys? Because who's in control of all things? God. God's control of the wind. He's in control of tornadoes. He's in control of storms. All of that. Look what he says. How is it that you, are, you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even, guess what? The wind and the sea obey <laughs> Because when he speaks, there is power in his words. There is spirit in his words to give life, to send, to send out the wind, to stop the wind. And that's what these angels that are riding these horses, because the horses are the four winds, guys. They're given, look what it says. And there went out another horse that was red, and guess what? There's a horse, there's a rider on him, but guess what? Power was given to what? Yeah, the rider. That that horse that has control that, that rider, that angel of the Lord that's that's he has control of that spirit. Right. Or that wind. Right? Yes. Think about it. Think about it for a second. That angel, because the interp the, the, the picture is a, a man riding on a horse. The interpretation is 
an angel of the Lord and the one the four winds. And he has power to do what? He's been given power. And to, and, and 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 then look at look at the next horse. Look at or look at the uh, fourth horse. He says, uh, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, "Come and see." And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. There's there's one of the four winds. And the angel of the Lord that's riding on him, his name that sat on him was what? There's an angel that's riding on him whose name is Death. He's called the angel of death. And hell followed with him. And guess what was given? This angel was given what? Power was given unto him. He's going to use that spirit, that wind, to do what? To kill with a sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. That horse is not the Antichrist. That rider is not the Antichrist. It's an angel of the Lord, and it's a spirit, one of the four spirits of the heavens. And, and look, look what he says. And after these things, I saw four angels. I think these are the exact four angels that were riding these four horses, right? Yes. Because think about it. These, these four horses are the four winds, right? Yes. And he's getting ready to tell you that I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding, he don't call them horses this time, but what he calls them. He was holding the four horses. They're holding the winds. That the that the the wind or the horse should not what? Blow on the earth nor on the sea. These are the part of the seven spirits of God. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. Because these angels have been given what? Power to hurt the earth. These four angels, he cries out to these four angels to whom it was given to do what? It is their job to hurt the earth. How are they going to hurt the earth? Well, they have power over the horses. They have power over the what? The four winds. And But they're told, right now, until these servants are sealed, guess what I want you to do? I want you, it's been given power for you to hurt the earth, but guess what he's telling them right now? Don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. Hold back the horses. Hold back the winds until I have what? Sealed, Sealed my 144,000. And that's what he tells you. Then sit, and then after they've been sealed, what's he going to do? He's going to tell Ezekiel to prophesy unto the wind and say to the wind, here's the four, think about it. He's, he's going to call to the four horses now. He's going to tell those angels to release the horses, to release the winds. So they can now, they're told right now not to hurt the earth, but what is their job? It's given to them to hurt the earth, right? Yes. So once these once these been sealed, once they once these hundred forty four thousand have life, after the four winds are released, after the four horses are released, guess what? Now these angels, their job is to hurt the earth, and then that's that's when you see the seven trumpets come along, and they start blowing their trumpets, and guess what they start doing? They allow the wind the elements to start hurting the earth. And that's the purpose of them. Now look, here's the purpose of the seven spirits because we know the eyes are the what? The seven spirits, the four winds are involved in that, right? And what do they do? The seven spirits, the eyes, the horses do what? They run, they stand before the Lord, they run to and throw for the earth, through the whole earth. And what does God use those four winds, those seven spirits for? To show himself what? He uses the elements, guys. He, he uses those four winds, those seven spirits to go into the earth to show himself strong. Look what it says here. Fire and hell, snow and vapor stormy wind for the purpose of doing what? Fulfilling his word. Fulfilling his word. 
So a lot of so when we when we start closing up on the book of Revelation, why are a lot of believers not going to understand they're getting close? Because they're not going to understand this. They're not going to understand that the things that are ha- God's. I'm going to show to you next week that God those those four kingdoms that we're, that are going to come up and rise up, guys. I'm going to show you that's what those four four seals are doing. They're bringing in and taking out those four kingdoms. I'm going to prove it to you. Now, let's give me, I'm going to give you an example here. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, cease not to cry unto the Lord, our God, for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard him. See, when when you cry to the Lord, you know what he can do? He can take those seven spirits and send them out into the world. And he can save you. Or he can destroy you. He can send a whirlwind. Or he can cease the wind. Or take away the storm. He he can do all those things. But guess what you need to do? What did Samuel do? Lord, we're going to perish. Please. And the Lord heard him, and, and, and Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. The Philistines drew near to battle against Israel, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines. We, now, we've all heard loud thunders before, but I promise you, it wasn't like this one. <laughs> this one discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. The Lord uses the elements, the winds, the, the hail, the snow, the vapor, to do something, guys, to show himself strong, yes. right? To fulfill his word. And that's what those four horses and those four horsemen are doing. And you know why? I'm going to show you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will rend it. How? With a stormy wind. In my fury. And there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger. And great what? in my fury to consume it so will i break down the wall how how are you going to break down the wall well with a stormy wind with an overflowing shower with great hailstones so will i break down the wall that you have daubed with untempered mortar and i'm going to do what i'm going to bring it down to the ground now now don't he could have done what he did with jericho couldn't he yes but that's not the normal way that the lord does things so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall. And you, guess what? You shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my what? Wrath. Thus will I fulfill my word. Thus will I show myself what? Strong. That's how he does it. He says, I, thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them, the people that have daubed it with untempered mortar. And I will say unto them, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. And how did I do it? I did it with a stormy wind. I did it with an overflowing shower. And I did it with what? Great hailstones. You think about this, okay? When... When Joseph was in Egypt, Pharaoh had a dream, right? Didn't know, nobody could interpret it. Joseph came along and he interpreted it. Seven years of what? Famine? I mean, seven years of plenty and then seven years of what? If there was no one to interpret that dream, they would not have prepared for the seven years of what? Famine, right? So Egypt would have what? Collapsed. In other words, God set up, he established that kingdom of Egypt through a famine. I mean, through through years of plenty and, and, and revealing that there was going to be a famine. If he hadn't revealed it, he could have taken down that kingdom just as easily as he what? Established it right. through using that famine. And what did he do 400 years later when he brought his people out of Egypt? What did he do when Moses and, 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 and Aaron went in there? He brought in locusts with a great east wind and took them out with a west wind. 
how did he part the Red Sea? With an east wind. He sent forth from before his throne those horses. If you want to picture it that way, remember, that's all they are. The red horse, the white horse, the black horse, the pale horse, all those horses, they're the east wind, the north wind, the south wind, the west wind. And he uses it to accomplish his wrath, to fulfill his will, to show himself strong, right? But he's, but he's doing it for a reason, guys. Let's watch this. After the trumpets, he says, the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet what? They repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols and gold of gold and silver the, and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders. God's trying to get, it is his, it is his will that all should come to repentance and that none should perish. And he sends forth these plagues. He did it to, he did it to uh, Pharaoh. He's going to do it to the, the people in the last days. He uses these four horses, these seven spirits, these four winds, right? To do what? To accomplish what was will, to get people to repent and to turn back to him. He says, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which have power over what? These plagues. And guess what? They repented not to give him glory. When men repent, it gives God glory. When God sends plagues and men turn from their sins and seek after him, it gives him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And guess what? They didn't repent. But here, and I'll close with this, guys. The same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the and the remnant which were affrighted, that were afraid, guess what they did? They repented. They gave God glory. God uses it. Some men repent. Some men don't repent. But God is going to accomplish His will the way He's pretty much always accomplished it. He sends a plague to Pharaoh. Pharaoh says, oh, I repent. Take it away. He takes it away. He hardens his heart. God has to send another one, right? But that's what these horses are. And I'm going to prove to you next week, guys, that these four horses that are coming in, you know what they're coming in for? To bring in the final four kingdoms.